Dream to become the next Sir Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein? Learn calculus from Refath Bari, aka 800 over 800 guy, is teaching calculus this year. Watch his videos. Hello folks, this is uh, Rifat Bari from Bari Science Lab. Today we're going to be looking at a few examples of our limits. So uh, our topic today, if you're wondering, is just uh, practicing some uh, basic elementary limits. So we're going to be taking a look at some algebraic ways to uh, solve limits. So uh, that's going to be our goal today. Uh, practicing uh, four examples that I have of a limit. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So this is our first example, the limit of x minus 3 over x minus 4 as uh, x approaches negative 1. This is a fairly simple limit if you recognize the fact that this function is continuous at x uh, equals negative 1. How do we know it's continuous? Well, the definition of continuity is that the limit of f of x as x approaches, I don't know, a on the left hand side is equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the right hand side is equal to f of a. And this uh, function uh, satisfies that definition. Why? Well, uh, if you just plug in negative 1 right here, you'll see that we get a valid result. Let's, and let's do that. Uh, so it becomes the limit. Let me make this thicker. <coughs> the limit as as x approaches negative 1 uh, of negative 1 minus 3 over negative 1 minus 4. So all I did was just substitute negative 1 for x right there. And that becomes negative 4 over negative 5. Uh, negative negative cancels out. And so my final answer is just 4 over 5. And uh, that's it. That's the limit of this function. So um, how did I solve this, uh, solve this question? Well. I uh, used a technique called um, the substitution, uh, direct substitution. And uh, that direct substitution only works if uh, the function, as I stated right here, is uh, continuous. So it only works only if uh, f of x is uh, continuous. All right, uh, let's move on to uh, our second question, uh, which is going to be our second example, um, which is the following. The limit of square root of x minus square root of 2 over x minus 2 as x approaches 2. Now, uh, seeing these, uh, these radicals in the, uh, in the numerator, you might think that the right method to solving this limit is conjugate. But actually, that isn't the case because the problem with this limit is not our numerator, but our denominator. If you plug in 2 uh, for x in the denominator, the denominator is going to be 0 right here. <coughs> so what do we do? Um, well, we're going to try to work backwards. We're going to try to use the difference of perfect squares to our advantage. Let me show you how. Uh, I'm going to try to make x uh, equal to 2 a uh, whole instead of a vertical asymptote. So let's see, uh, let's see how I can do that. Okay, so let's rewrite the numerator as, uh, as follows. So bring this right over here. So the limit as x approaches 2 um, became long again. So this, let's uh, make the denominator Let's make the denominator square root of x minus 2 times the square root of x plus the square root of 2. Uh, when we do that, you'll notice that we actually have a term that is common in both the numerator and denominator. And that term is this x minus square root of x minus square root of 2 right here. <coughs> so after I cancel this term out, what I'm left with is simply a 1 in the numerator. Uh, so I'm left with a 1 in the numerator and uh, square root of x plus square root of 2 in the denominator. So uh, let me erase this. Okay, so that's what I'm left with in the top and the bottom. Now I know that x is approaching 2, so I can just substitute in 2 for x over here. So if I do that, what do I get? I get uh, 1 over the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2. And that, of course, just simplifies to 
two radical two. Two radical two. Now, uh, for some of you out there, you can just leave it like that, but um, in calculus, we uh, want to simplify this uh, simplify this radical in the denominator. And we'll do that simply by multiplying by, uh, by square root of two. Uh, and if we do that, um, our final answer becomes square root of two over four. And uh, that's our final answer for uh, this question. Let's move on to our next example. In our next example, we're gonna look at uh, something quite similar. Uh, see if you can imply uh, what you learned in the previous example in this one. So what I have here is the limit of x minus nine over three minus the square root of x as x approaches nine. Now, you're probably wondering why don't you just plug in nine for x? Well, let's see what happens if I do that. If I do that, I get, um, first of all, I get a zero in the numerator, and I get what? Um, sometimes it doesn't work. And uh, in the denominator, I get three minus square root of nine, and that becomes zero on the top over So I get zero in the numerator and zero in the denominator. This is an indeterminate form, meaning that we can actually simplify this function algebraically such that it does not become undefined at x equals nine. But how do we simplify it in that way? Well, I'm gonna try to use the same approach as before. Here, when I unsimplify the denominator, into difference of perfect squares. We're gonna to try to apply the same thing over here. Um, but instead of the denominator, let's do that to the numerator. So um, let's see what happens. Uh, let's bring this right over here. So the limit as x approaches uh, nine of, <coughs> uh, what is it? Uh, it's square root of x minus three times square root of x plus three all over three uh, minus square root of x. Now, there's a little problem here, if you didn't already notice. You can see that three minus square root of x is not the same as x square root of x minus three, right? So what can we do? Well, there's a little uh, trick we, you can use, uh, not even a trick, it's just, uh, we can multiply this by negative one. Uh, so let me show you what I mean. Minus, Great. I'll start even right here. Um, let's try to use the other pen. Um, negative. Yeah, this works again. So uh, let's write over here negative um, square root of x minus 3. Right? Because that's what we had before in the denominator. Negative square root of x minus 3 is just 3 minus square root of x. That's it. So now we can go ahead and uh, subtract all we all the things we want. Uh, these two cancel out. Um, because you have a negative in the denominator, this top part is just gonna become negative, uh, negative what? It's gonna become negative square root of x plus three. We know that x is just uh, gonna approach nine, so let's go ahead and substitute nine for x. So we get uh, negative three plus three which is equal to negative six. And that is the limit of this function as it approaches nine. <coughs> uh, pretty simple, all we had to do was uh, unsimplify the numerator in a hope that we could, um, we could cancel out some uh, common factor. So uh, let's go ahead and transition into our last example, which is uh, as follows. This is a pretty simple limit. Um, if you recognize it, that's uh, great, it's a uh, derivative. Um, this, this limit right here is actually uh, the derivative of the function f of x equals x squared. Um, so the answer will be 2x if you use uh, the power rule. But uh, if you use the limit definition of the derivative, that's also fine. Uh, so how do we do that? Well, it's pretty simple. If uh, if you didn't watch my last video, um, all we have to do is simplify the numerator 
right numerator becomes x squared plus 2x h plus h squared and don't forget this negative x squared over here all divided by h now uh, you see those common h x's so let's cancel these out <coughs> and now i'm just left with um what am i left with now i'm left with wow now i'm just left with 2 xh plus h squared so uh, if i just factor out an h over here um, i'm going to get h times uh, h times 2x plus h and now i can just uh, cancel out this common factor in the top and bottom and i'm left with uh, the limit as h approaches 0 of 2x plus h and since h approaches 0 we can just go ahead and disregard uh, this h so our final answer is 2x all right folks so uh, that's it um, those were all the four limit examples that i showed you today uh, so thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you next time bari science lab to fall in love with math and science especially programming